Straight ahead on WBKB News at 11, the City of Posen kicks off their 64th annual Potato Festival over the weekend. Plus, children enjoyed a day of science and fun at the Besser Museum. And an Alpina woman celebrates her anniversary as the longest serving bartender. We'll have those stories plus your local weather and sports. The news that affects you starts now. From Rogers City to Tawa City and all points in between, this is Northeast Michigan's award-winning news team. We are your source for news, weather, and sports. We are WBKB News at 11. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Liwanag. It's that time again. The Posen Chamber of Commerce kicked off the weekend with the 64th Annual Potato Festival. This is the biggest event of the year for Posen. The festival features various activities such as 5K run and walk, numerous flea markets and antiques, a polka dance, a kitty parade, arts and craft show, and of course, a potato dish contest. Many of people in the Posen community look forward for this annual affair as a way to finish off the summer. Chamber of Commerce President Randy Adelski shares with us the importance of the Posen Potato Festival and how it benefits the city. The festival is huge for our community. Um, we have hundreds of volunteers who help us out. Uh, this is a big shot in the arm before winter time for uh, our town. Uh, it's probably the major, major fundraiser for all of our local charities. The Posen Potato Festival continues tomorrow starting with the VFW breakfast at 8 a.m. followed by the Grand Parade at 1.30 and the Kilbasa Eating Contest at 3.30. This afternoon, the Shout Eureka Discovery Program held several free hands-on science activities at the Besser Museum. The Shout Eureka program is designed for parents to get involved with their children as they learn about different types of aspects that science offers. Children got a chance to learn about solids, gases, and liquids, but the most important thing they learned today was that science is fun. The program was free of charge, and director Patrick Pokorski says that he and his wife started this program because they get such a joy from seeing children learning to love science. Give them a chance to learn science at this level and get into science as they go on. We have children that were in our science program 15 years ago run up to us at, at Walmart or at Myers, or, and they'll run up to us and say, I remember your science programs, and I'm now going to be a major in science. I want, and we just sit back and say, mission accomplished. If you'd like more information about Shout Eureka, please call 989-595-6695 or email them at shoutureka at outlook.com. This morning, Options Pregnancy Center hosted the first annual Life Ride fundraiser at the East Campus Youth and Family Center. Options Pregnancy Center is a new nonprofit organization in the Alpena area, and Life Ride was their official kickoff to feature some of their services. Some of, the op some of Options Pregnancy Center's main initiatives are to protect, to save lives, to educate, and of course, help those who are experiencing an unexpected pregnancy. The folks at Options Pregnancy hopes that today's bike and walk fundraiser help spread their objective of assisting people in the community. To be a support system to that young lady that walks through the door, maybe with an unexpected pregnancy. We're there to offer her support, free pregnancy tests, total confidential services. We are hoping to just continue spreading the word about options so that the community knows that we're here and that we're ready to serve people. For more information on Option Pregnancy Center and about their grand opening at the end of the month, visit optionspregnancycenter.org. Recently, a local woman bartender celebrated her anniversary as the Guinness Book of World Records longest serving bartender. I got the chance to visit Maple Tavern and talk to the local legend about her special honor. Take a look. Her laughter is a warm, welcoming sound here at Maplewood Tavern. This little bar off French Road in Alpena is home to the Guinness Book of Records, world's longest serving bartender. Meet Clarice Gronkovich. She's been serving the community for 75 years. She took over the title as the longest serving bartender back in 2011 and is very content with the accomplishment. I guess I must have felt good and probably wanted, and I like being with people, and they like being with me because they keep coming back all the time for all these years. Clarice was only 21 years old when she became the bartender at Maplewood, and now at 96 years of age, she now owns the place and doesn't see herself stopping anytime soon. Get satisfaction coming here every day is something to do with my life. Not much you can do at my age, <laughs> other than wait on people. <laughs> You know, you can't go and 
run anywhere or do that, so I come here every day. We've got people from California, we got people from Florida, we got people from Canada, a lot of different places. It's just a fantastic one. That's about all I can say about her. What do you say about your mother that's been so good to you all your life? Right? My mother is not only my mother, she's my best friend. Everybody loves her. I'm more than willing to share her as my mom. And as far as being proud, a daughter could never be any more proud than this daughter is of, of her mother. In Alpena, Neil Iwanag, WBKB News. <laughs> Coming up next on WBKB News at 11, find out why Kmart is already preparing for the holiday season. All that and more, next. Welcome back. In your Money Watch this evening, Macy's is making room for the nation's largest consumer electronics chain. Starting in November, the retailer will open up Best Buy shops within some of its department stores. The company says it will begin the collaboration in 10 stores as a way to test selling consumer electronics. The 10 locations have not been identified. Kmart is expanding its layaway program to jumpstart the holiday shopping season. The retailer is offering 8 to 12 week layaway plans letting customers spread out their payments before Christmas. Kmart will also allow shoppers to put items on laid away without a down payment. The option will run through the end of November. Many McDonald's restaurants are skipping McRib this year. The boneless barbecue pork sandwich appears in stores every year, but this year fewer McDonald's will be selling the fan favorite. Only around 8,000 of McDonald's, roughly 14,000 restaurants in the U.S. plan to carry it as the fast food chain is offering healthier alternatives. If you're heading to the pump, GasBuddy.com and AAA of Michigan helped us find the highest and lowest gas prices locally and across the state. The lowest price for gas in Alpena is coming in at $2.16 at Meyer Station. The highest is at $2.18 at Marathon. Across the state, the lowest price at the pump is $1.96 in Plainwell. And the highest price is coming in at $3.20 in Copper Harbor. There's still much more to come on WBKB News at 11. Kyle Logan will be with sports, and I'll be right back with your full weather forecast. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Now it's time to look at the weather. Today's high was 63 and the low is 45. Normal, 71 and a low of 48. Record high was back in 1931 of 97 and the low of 28 back in 1943. Sunrise was at 7.09 a.m. and sunset was at 7.51 p.m. Looking at your current conditions, it's 55 degrees right now with the humidity of 61%. And with the satellite radar, you can see the clouds hovering around northeast Michigan. And we have a frost advisory until 9 a.m. for th the three following counties, Mount Morency, Oscoda, and Agamal. So definitely bring in your plants and cover them for this uh, upcoming frost advisory. And uh, tonight, Clear, but with patchy frost coming in around midnight. And tomorrow, patchy frost before 8 a.m. Otherwise, mostly sunny skies, highs at 64. Tomorrow night, mostly clear with the low of 51. And now taking a look at our extended weather forecast. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, mostly clear with sunny skies in the mid-70s. Then Friday, a chance for showers and thunderstorms with the high of 72. Now it's time for today's photo of the day. Today's photo was sent in by Nora Chimner of Greenbush. Now Nora took this photo of the sun setting on Lake Huron after a light rainfall in Greenbush. This is definitely an amazing picture of the orange and blue skies reflecting the lake. Absolutely stunning. Thank you, Nora, for sending us this photo. If you have a photo you would like to send us, email it along with the short description to news at wbkb11.com. Watch this evening, preventive In your health watch this evening, preventive mastectomies could soon become a necessity. A study in e-biomedicine says women who have the BRCA genes and are genetically predisposed to develop breast and cervical cancers could one day opt for new treatments over surgery, the drugs to, to prevent progesterone from triggering the development of tumors. Hypertension is the top risk factor associated with deaths around the world. A study in the Lancet finds the risk of death from high blood pressure has doubled in recent decades. Smoking and high body mask index are the next most significant risks. And there's more proof that antioxidants in chocolate may be even better for you as you age. German researchers found that consuming cocoa flavonoids improves cardiovascular function and lessens the effects of aging, including hypertension. They say the flavonoids significantly improve blood flow and lower cholesterol. In national news, Firefighters are battling a wildfire in California that has grown to more than 100 square miles. The fire is burning in both Calaveras and Amarillo counties about 60 miles southeast of Sacramento. Wendy Gillette reports. The Roaring Butte wildfire exploded over the past two days in Northern California. The flames have destroyed more than a dozen structures and are threatening thousands of homes. The gentleman that just left said that everything is threatened right now, but um, we're hoping for the best. 3,000 firefighters are in place and more are on the way. Yeah, it's pretty close right there. The fire has forced hundreds to evacuate as it moved in the direction of neighborhoods in the town of San Andreas and other smaller mountain communities. We're getting ready to head out. As soon as we see flames, we're out of here. Firefighters were able to contain a small percentage of the fire Saturday, but it's still eating up more ground. We just watched it uh, progressively go up the hill a little bit. It, it's picked up probably, I don't know, probably uh, half a mile or so since we first started watching. Saturday night, another fire northwest of Sacramento also grew quickly. The Valley Fire in Lake County spread to 400 acres, prompting the mandatory evacuation of the town of Cobb and other nearby areas. At least four firefighters were burned while battling the blaze. California Governor Jerry Brown has declared a state of emergency as the fires grow in the drought raved area. In politics, the field of Republicans running for president is down to 16 now that former Texas Governor Rick Perry has dropped out. Perry took a parting shot at the frontrunner, Donald Trump, last night, and today, Trump fired back. Juliana Goldman has more. Mr. Perry, Governor Perry, he's gone. A triumphant Donald Trump said farewell to former Texas Governor Rick Perry, who once called him a cancer on conservatism. It certainly seems to be unlucky to attack him. He issued a warning shot to just about anybody who's taken him on, like Senator Rand Paul, who in a tweet questioned why a reality star is leading the Republican field. 
and former neurosurgeon Ben Carson, who earlier this week stepped into the Trump boxing ring when he questioned the brash billionaire's faith. I don't in any way deny my faith in God. And I think uh, that probably is a big difference here. Carson later apologized. He surged to second place behind Trump, with one new poll showing him within striking distance in Iowa. Campaigning there today, Trump still claimed the outsider mantle, colorfully discussing his self-funded campaign and the money he's turning away. I feel sort of foolish because guys are coming up to me saying, I want to put millions of dollars, one guy, five million dollars, and I'm turning them down. I say, I don't want it. Trump is also promising to release a tax plan in the next few weeks that takes on hedge funds. He said hedge fund managers will have to pay up because they laugh all the way to the bank. You don't typically hear tough talk toward Wall Street from Republicans, but that unorthodox style seems to be working for Trump. Juliana Goldman, CBS News, Washington. Sports is coming up next, and Kyle Logan is here with a preview. Kyle? Neil, tonight in sports, tons of highlights and scores to show you in the college football world. Also, Al Alcona soccer and Onaway football are in action. And despite the loss on Friday night, there was more football played in Tawas earlier this afternoon. To find out who you have to come on back, sports is next. Growing up, every child dreams of playing football at the highest level. Regardless of the roadblocks and the tough path it takes to get there, starting young can be key. Earlier this afternoon at Tawas High School, the Tawas Area Ravens hosted the Alpena Jets in some youth football action. Many 5th and 6th grade boys and girls were given a chance to showcase their skills and have fun playing amongst their friends. When the clock hit zero, still neither team had scored, but that was okay because the coaches say at the end of the day, all that matters is that these athletes are learning. Well, the biggest thing is that we teach them when they're little how to do things properly, and they're going at a at which is their fast speed, but it's it's a slower speed than what they do when they're much older. If they're getting the proper instructions, and they're tackling the right way, and they're blocking the right way, then it's much safer for them when they get older, so that they know how to do things as opposed to when kids get really big, stronger and faster. Fortunately, none of these athletes will be able to play school ball until they hit the seventh grade. But the hope is that playing at such an early age will only give them an advantage moving forward. And some high school soccer action taking place earlier this morning. The Alcona Tigers and another dub add another W to their record with a decisive 7-1 victory over the Wolverines of Augury Sims. Up next for Alcona and head coach Tim Monroe will be the Panthers from Standish Sterling on Monday. There was some high school football as well on this beautiful Saturday. Some eight-man football as the Onway Cardinals go on the road to defeat the Eagles of Stevenson by a final of 30-24. to With that win, the Cardinals move to 2-1 on the season, and they will look for their third win this Friday when they host Cedarville. 
It is Saturday, so naturally it's time to look at what occurred in the world of college football. It's really no question that the biggest name joining the world of Michigan sports this offseason was Jim Harbaugh, coach still in search of his first win, and today he got that chance in front of the home faithful. Big Blue in their home debut, taking on the Oregon State Beavers. Rough start for the Michigan D. After giving up a couple big runs, Beavers QB Seth Collins drops back and finds Hunter Jarman in the back of the end zone there. He made the catch over the shoulder catch, and he was able to get a foot down. Oregon State went up 6-0. From there, though, DJ Durkin's defense settled in. The offense eventually came alive late second quarter inside the five. Devion Smith takes the carry right side, sheds one defender and waltzes into the end zone. Big Blue leads 10-7. Just four minutes later, Smith again inside the five again and he barrels his way into the end zone yet again. The Wolverines now up 10. Second half much of the same this time from the eight. Smith once again trucks a man and he is in for a touchdown. Smith rushed for 126 yards and three touchdowns. The Wolverines go on to win 35-7 in Harbaugh's first game as a coach inside the big house. And after the Michigan highlight, it's only fitting we follow with the Michigan State Spartans. Late game, unfortunately, so no highlights. The top 10 matchup with Oregon is currently ongoing. The offenses were on fire early. Then the defenses settled in. Sparty went into the locker room up 14 to 7. Thanks to two touchdowns via Connor Cook, Oregon began the second half with a bang, returning a punt back 81 yards to tie it up. And from there, Sparty seemed to take control once again. D'Antonio's crew scored 10 unanswered, going up 24 to 14. The two since traded scores, and we have our score right now 31 to 24 still in the fourth quarter though so a lot can still happen and we have a couple more scores to report for you. The Chippewas of Central Michigan welcomed in the Hawks of Monmouth. Quarterback Cooper Rush throws for 328 yards and three scores, and Central Michigan scores 24 in the second quarter alone. They go on to win 31-10 to and improve to 1-1 one one on the season. Western Michigan, on the other hand, had a tough time in their second game. The Broncos went on the road to meet Georgia Southern and fell 43-17. to The Broncos gave up 420 total yards and dished out four turnovers. They fall to to 0-2 on the season. And finally, the Sprint Cup boys took to Richmond tonight in the final race before the start of the chase next week. Matt Kenseth led 352 of the 400 laps, and that, folks, is domination. Kyle Busch came home in second with Joey Logano in third, followed by Eric Almirola and Dale Earnhardt Jr. rounding out the top five. Next week, the real dog sled begins as the chase begins at Chicagoland. So, Neil, a lot of sports going on, a lot of national, a lot of local college. I mean, just, I mean, uh, for a couple of others, the Detroit Tigers, once again, we're trying to get another game in Cleveland. But two days in a row now, this one's postponed because of rain. So tomorrow we already have a doubleheader with Cleveland starting at 1:15. So there's no telling us to win this game that got postponed tonight is going to be uh, rescheduled for. And big news, the Detroit Lions open up their season tomorrow in San Diego at 4:15. So a lot happening, a lot of exciting sports happening real quick. Football is back. That's true. College and NFL football. So the Lions and then you got Michigan State and you got University of Michigan with their first win tonight. So that's big for the state of Michigan and everyone else in the area. So Exactly. All right, thanks Kyle. No problem. Coming up next on WBKB News at 11, we'll tell you why this little kitty is literally a cat burglar. All that and more next.
Welcome back. Well, here's an interesting story and an ironic one. A police sergeant who owns a cat that loves to steal. Brent Weisberg has the details. Time, he brought me a bag of weed. If the law held cats responsible for their actions, then Westland Police Sergeant Dave Campus says that his cat, Tigger, is probably guilty of criminal trespassing, theft, and possession of marijuana. But it obviously had been outside and, and it was starting to mold over. And I said, dude, you can't be bringing the pot home. Prosecution of this four year old criminal minded cat wouldn't be too hard. In the summertime, he's pretty prolific. The sergeant shows us all of the clothing that Tigger has unlawfully taken. This is this summer's collection. The trail cams that Kempis installed tell the whole story. It didn't take very long before I figured out who it was. Kempis kept his cat secret to himself. But then, at the urging of his records department, he created the Happy Klepto Kitty Facebook page during a training session. Now, Kempis and Tigger have their routines. During the day when Kempis is out on patrol looking for the real criminals, Tigger goes out and, like any good thief, scopes out his next victim. That's exactly what he's doing. I'm sure he's scouting out what he wants to bring home tonight. <laughs> That's funny. So does this, does this cop arrest the cat, his own cat? or? I think, I mean, it depends on what he's stealing. If he's bringing you back paraphernalia, then you only have to keep the cat around to bring you back more of these things. You don't want these things running wild in schools or anything like that. So I think, uh, depending on what the cat comes back with, it can be good, it can be bad. But I think maybe he may have to think about locking him up, maybe in a cage or something, in the middle of the night if he's going to get out and steal all these things. Well, he's not stealing anything particular and significant. And that's, that he has to actually put him in little um, <laughs> handcuffs. Poor little cat, but at the same time you're stealing. I think he just does it for fun. That's probably what it, it is. might be a little strong, but it's his cat, so he's the owner. He does what he wants. But and remember, you can read more about our broadcast stories and get the scoop on other news items online. Just visit wbkb11.com for sports, weather, news updates anytime, day or night. Or add us on Facebook at facebook.com/wbkbtv. Well, that'll do it for tonight's show. Be sure to catch us tomorrow night at 11. Have a great night.